there are several ways that I like to make retrieves. Obviously the retrieve is just a really important part, but some of it is some of the setup. And some of it is how we get dogs to understand better with marking, which would be watching birds and getting a gauge on the distance and running to the spot where they saw it go down. Some of it, a lot of times you get dogs that don't wanna go as far as they need to, they run short. Sometimes the, the, the friction can be like a shadow. I've had dogs where there's a, a shadow and I send the dog and it hits the shadow and it takes the shadow line. It just mentally can't get through it. Sometimes it's a change in grass cover, the depth, you know, like the length. So those are all barriers. And, and sometimes it's a river, sometimes it's a ditch, sometimes it's a creek, sometimes it's a hill it has got a crest. There's all sorts of things that these dogs run into. And so I can only throw so far and marking would be watching it go. So what I like to do, and I do it for a variety of reasons, is I think that there is a lot of value in dogs with good memories. Understanding that they gotta remember something. It's not so compulsive or impulsive to see it, go get it. See it, go get it, that's part of it. But 99% of the time when I shoot a duck in a duck blind, I don't send the dog immediately. Because there's other ducks probably around. My, where I hunt, we don't have a big window to shoot ducks all day long. We got about 15 minutes at first light. So I'm not sending my dogs into the decoys to screw up the fifth, 10 of the 15 minutes. So we might shoot that first volley of wood ducks that comes in and there might be three of them laying. And as long as they're upside down and I see the white, they're not going anywhere. If it's a cripple, yeah, I gotta get on it. But if they're laying there, I'm not sending the dog in to make those retrieves. I'll wait until it gets really quiet and I'm probably done for the day. Then I'll line them and send them. Well, I want my dogs to remember that stuff. It takes some practice. And so the, I use what is we call a memory type retrieve a lot, most of the time. It's probably to a fault. Like I, my dogs lack in marking skills because I do so many memories. But I do think my dogs have really good memories. And so my dogs will remember stuff and it goes on how they think. They've got short-term memories and they've got long-term memories, just like us. Their short-term memory is important to understand because it has to do with your timing and correction and praise. If you don't do it very quickly to the action, they don't know what you're correcting or praising for. So that's a short memory. Like if you, it's, they say it's 2.7 seconds. They've done studies on it. So if you don't correct them or praise them in that short window of time, you're not really correcting or praising for the right action. The long-term memory, I've seen dogs remember birds hours later. And is it a combination of memory or is it a combination of memory and trusting me when I say go that way, they go that way and they just have, it's probably a combination. But I do think they can remember stuff for a long time and I think they can remember a lot of different things. I think they can remember two, three, four different dummies out there on the landscape. But it, not a, to start out with. First they gotta remember one. And then they gotta remember that there's maybe two and that's a lot harder than one. And then they got a threes and fours. So the way I do that is I use what we call a, uh, a trailing memory a lot. And I do it with my young dogs. Um, I need a good dog, that, I need a dog to heal well to do this. Because if it doesn't heal well, I can't set the drill up properly. So the way to set up a trailing memory is to walk out with the dog on heel, drop a dummy, give it a second, let the dog see it. Craig Corp started me on this. I use this little watch cue. I give them a cue, watch. So I'll drop a dummy, they'll look at it. It's a tension. And they hear me in the background go, watch. And when they're watching it, I say, no, heal. And I turn and I walk away from it. I broke their concentration. Now it's no longer a short-term memory thing, it's a long-term memory thing. So to start out with, I might heal them back five, six steps, I turn back around, they look and I might just send them. If they see the dummy and I know they see it, I can read their body, I might just send them. Go get it, bring it back. But once you get into these bigger pictured ones, longer distance ones, longer time ones, I might come back around, spin them around, look out and go watch. Because I said watch over there. And I, I look at it this way, it's like the dog takes a picture and so when, when you look out at the landscape, when, when you shoot, if you shoot a bird, a lot of people talk about marking, mark the bird. Well, mark the bird, what does that mean? Well, there's that tall tree and that porta potty and it fell between the two and it's one third of the way from the porta potty to the tree. I just marked it down. 
so that I have a reference to go to. And when I walk to that spot in the field, I can always look at, well, there's the tree and there's the porta potty and I gotta be one third of the distance there. That'll get me in a pretty close spot to start really looking. So when you start talking about watching stuff and marking stuff, I feel like you're almost teaching this dog to watch. It's like, take a picture. And now when you take the picture, there's all the other parts of the landscape in that picture. And they remember it went right there in the landscape. Now, no heel, turn them around. Bring them back on an absolute straight line. You don't walk this way, you don't do this, you walk us. Turn around 180 degrees, you walk away from it. And maybe add five to 10 yards. Turn back around with a young dog and they look down the aisle and if they can't see the bird, which early on I want them to see it, but if they can't see it, I tell them, watch. And I think they go back in their mind when I said, watch. It's just, now it's watch. We zoomed back a little bit. It's the same picture though. And so when I say watch and they look the right way, now I send them. And so I'm helping them have a better understanding of where that thing was by, do, by doing these drills. Well, the, other thing, the other thing you're doing is you drop the dummy, you turn around, you create distance, and you create time. Because the further you walk away, the longer it takes. The shorter it is, the sooner it is. The fresher it is in their memory, the shorter the run, the easier. The longer you go, you can only throw a dummy so far. How, how far can you throw a dummy, Charlie? Uh, like 50 feet. 50 feet. So what'll happen is, is we'll get in a habit of a dog goes and makes the retrieve at 50 feet over and over and over because we want to get it out there. I don't want to throw it five feet. I want to get it out there. So you throw it out there. Well, I've seen so many times where someone will send their dog on a retrieve and it might be set up in a trailing memory and it's 100 feet. It's 100 feet. It's 33 yards. We set them up and we turn them and we send them and the dog runs out 50 feet and starts hunting. And the reason they do that is because they've memorized how many steps it takes to get to the dummy. It's repetition and consistency will form a habit. Every retrieve is 50 feet. They learn very quickly, look at 50 feet. That's where it is. It takes me eight steps to eight bounds to get there. There's, it's un, you can't believe how consistent that is. But when you start doing trailing memories, you can walk 50 feet, plus 50 feet, plus 50 feet, plus 50 feet. You get 250 feet maybe. But I don't know, go from zero to 250, I go from zero to 50, send them. Then I back up 100, send them. Then I go 150 and send them. And the thing about it is, is I always, when I set this up, like those, those are the mode trails. I really like using trails. I like fence lines, I like mode trails, I like straight edges. It helps my dog carry straight lines. So what we end up doing is, we put the dummy in the same spot every time. Let them remember that and you add the distance backwards. So I send dogs, I have some dogs that I'm gonna to work tonight that are stick, a little sticky for me right now. They don't wanna run real big. They're popping, they're turning around and like asking for help and they shouldn't. So I changed my, that's an extreme. They're not doing it very well. So I changed my methods the last couple of weeks. When I go for walks, I drop a couple of dummies at the end of my driveway and I walk a 40 and a half. It's a little over a quarter mile. Mm -hmm. And I send them back on it. Now I'm just stretching them out. Just, and now all of a sudden they start to realize it's not short, I might as well run. And about the time they start to run real good, then I'll start to stop them and say, stop, go to the right, stop, come back, stop. I'll change the game for them to keep them honest. But because I kind of got them second guessing me a little bit and they're popping, now I'm gonna stretch them out. So I'm back and forth, it's balance, 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 balance. So trailing memory, walk out, drop it, turn around, come back. You can put the dog on remote sit, this is a variation of a memory. Put the dog on remote sit, turn around, walk out, add your 100 feet, whatever it is, pitch the dummy, get it nice and high, let them see it, walk back to them, turn and send them. That's a sight memory, it's a memory, <laughs> That needs to be patched. <laughs> it's, a sight, it's a sight memory. You didn't trail them to it. The trail is easier because you're literally leading them a path back to it. You're helping them find success. The sight memory is they gotta sit there and watch it. Well, what do they have to do to do a, tra a sight memory? They gotta do the drill we just did. What do they gotta do to do a trailing memory? They gotta do the drills we've been doing. Because if you can't get a dog to heal well and you're setting up a trailing memory, you're never gonna get a trailing memory out of it. You're gonna have a struggle bus the whole way because the dog doesn't 
get in the straight of mind to even think about where the dummy is. They can't walk on heel. It's the key to all that stuff.